Hello everybody, welcome back to Ubrink Studio. My name's Anita and if this is your first visit, this is part two of the tea bag challenge for February 2021. Um, on the last video, if you haven't watched it, I showed you how to open up your tea bags that have already been used so that you get these little pieces of paper. And when you did it, they would have been all screwed up and scrunched up because that's how you get all these designs. And now I have ironed them, so we've got flat pieces of paper that we want to work into, add perhaps some more colour or to draw into or stamp on or whatever it is that you want to do with them. When I'm working with tea bags in this way, I like to have a look to see what sort of things that I can see in them, um, if anything at all. Uh, you know, what could I use this for? What would it be able to represent in anything that I'm actually making? They're very organic, so you can do quite a bit with them. Uh, I don't tend to keep straight edges. I do like them ripped, and I would probably rip them even further once I start using them. And some of them, like this one, have still got the T in them. Just tiny bits, these little flecks, which is quite interesting too. Just to note on ironing, when you go to iron your tea bags, do it in between two pieces of baking parchment. Don't ruin your iron um, and have a window open as well because if you like this one where you've still got some tea on them, you will get some fumes coming off them. And I don't know whether that's going to damage my health or not, so I don't take the risk. I have a, an open window um, as I'm ironing them in between the baking parchment. Okay, be careful of your fingers. Now I'm just going to adjust the camera so that you can see what I'm up to. Okay, so for this purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to be using one of these. Now these are Koinor and they're brilliant for working into papers. So I have to say I have also used them on fabrics as well. And as you can see, you have all your colour palettes all ready for you to use, all stacked up. Okay. I will be using some strike, quite strong colours here because I want you to be able to see what I'm getting up to. One of my most favourite things to use are these ink tense blocks. You can use these wet or dry and then re-wet them afterwards which is quite good fun. Okay, And as you can see these are well used and there's also new bits being put in as well. I have got some normal pencils um, and I have got some of these pens as well to go over things with um, and also some stays on for stamping. Okay, what you don't want to do is to get your tea bag too wet. If you do, then you may end up with a problem. Okay, so this first tea bag I'm going to draw. On here using a pen. This is a green tea bag. I'm going to use this black pen, checking of course that it works. And I think, I don't know, I think I might just do a little butterfly. I'm not pressing too hard, but you just want to use this as though it's a normal paper. Okay. As you can see, it works very, very well. There we have a little basic butterfly just drawn onto the paper. Okay, so you don't need to worry too much about it, just do whatever you wish to do. And then if you wanted to colour that with your pens, just take your time, don't, you know, don't rush it. So we may give him a, or her, a red body. And perhaps these little bits here in red as well. Okay. 
Okay. And maybe a bit of green. Give some highlights into the green. Just to give it a bit of extra colour, really. Just so that you can see. And there we have him. So that's using pens and pencils. You can use any, use whatever is your favourite type of medium. Okay, so if we get another one. I haven't used anything else on these at all. So they are literally just the tea bag as it was. Okay, and uh, I'll just make sure. It smells of marzipan, this stays on stuff. That we've got enough on there. Now, normally I would have um, a mat underneath this to give me a better print, but I think that's fine. Okay, so we've got that penny farthing on there, which is quite interesting. I always take the ink pad to the block. I never take the block to the ink pad. Okay. Almonds that smells of. Definitely almonds. So now we have two. Okay, so that's really good how that takes. And of course, once you've got your stamp on there, if you're a stamper, you can then paint them. These would make nice little cards. So that's two ways we've got one we've drawn, one we've stamped. And now we're going to add a little bit of colour, I think, to this one. Um, and first of all, I will use these. Okay, so I'm going to use this palette here, these greens, I think. Sometimes they come up quite vivid. So if that's the case, I'll just knock them back a bit. You don't want your tea bag to be too wet when you're doing this. It will take it, but you don't need to. I'm just moving this colour along here, sometimes darker. This is hardly anything on the paintbrush, as you can see. This is dry brushing. So I just want to see that pattern coming out. For those of you who have been to my um, power text classes, you'll know that when we're dry brushing, we will take a lot of the paint off. You don't necessarily need a great deal of it. You have to decide whether you want solid colour which we will do down here because I want you to see that you can still see the pattern coming through with these even though the colour is solid you're going to get that T pattern still which is quite nice. These work like a watercolour, really. And you can paint them how you want, because obviously it's going to be your piece. And you need to decide what you want to see or don't see. Okay. Just dry that brush off. So 
tell you it is painted. I don't know if you can see all the pattern where it was dry brushed there. Then we went flooding in. And as you can see where the tea leaves are, it's quite interesting. And it's still very organic. Lay it to one side to dry. Don't lay it on top of another one at that instance. So that's how the Cohen all works. And then we've got the ink tense blocks, which are these. I don't know if you've used these before, but I'm just going to demonstrate on here. Um, I'll probably use this bright orange because you'll see it better. So just dry block. like so then just water this is just plain water that I've got here that you would normally have okay and then this can come alive you can move it about the same as watercolors you decide where you're going to do it and what you're going to do with it you might want to leave it as it is there again you might not okay so if we do that on a tea bag I don't think I want bright orange though. I think I want to stick to some organic colours. Okay, so um, I'll go in with this green here. So I'm going to do the same as I did there. I'm just going to go over the tea bag with the block. There's a crease in there where I ironed it. It should come out quite interesting. Okay. Then we'll add some water and see how that changes. So I can spread that. It's like a, a, a sort of mossy green. I can spread that around as much as I like. too much water on that bit but it doesn't matter after all it is a tea bag I'll just dry off my brush and there you can see still very organic and very translucent okay so I hope that that has given you some ideas on how to add colour and how to add some um, pattern onto your tea bags. That although they have got pattern, um, you know, you might want to add some more. If you're going to make cards, these are lovely because if you put your stamp or draw your picture or do whatever what you want on that, and then you have your one piece there which you can put onto a card and use it as an embellishment. So you're making your own embellishments and they are quite nice, as you can see. So this could be somebody who's left their penny farthing and you could make this bit here into shrubs. Um, could be a winter scene, could be anything really. Depends whether you want to add any colour to it or not. Um, this one I will colour because this, this to me looks like there's a bug in there. So we could make that into a bug of some description, perhaps a beetle, maybe a stag beetle or something. Um, so just have a good look at them. Wait for them to dry because once they've dried, the colours become more vivid, as you can see with the Kohenor. This one's still very wet. And that's with the ink tense, which is quite subtle, but you can make it more and more vibrant by adding more and more colour. Um, and don't forget, at some point, if you're a sewer, we may stitch into these. I certainly will be when I do mine. Um, so I hope I've given you some tips and inspiration and got you thinking and you're sort of eager to have a go, I hope. Um, so once you've got your tea bags dried, emptied and pressed, um, see what you can do with them. And I look forward to seeing it. Take care now. Bye bye.